friends welcome back to my channel um, so today I uh, am bringing you into uh, one of my lessons um, that had um, I think it was last week's lesson um, and I am uh, gonna go with you over what are our new strengths and weaknesses as we are coming along here into this dressage journey So the first step here as one of our weaknesses is still the mounting block. So I can now get on Hazel, no issue. Um, the problem that I had that day is as soon as I got on her, she was basically uh, pacing around with her legs, doing some leg yield, circles, backing up, all kinds of crazy things. And that's on her own account. I'm not asking her to do anything, she's just doing it. Um, I guess either because she's anxious or something is going on here so this is still something that we are working on I am glad I'm able to um, get on her but um, I find that I still have to work a lot more on her patience basically to just have her stand still and do nothing for a couple minutes So as you can see here, leg yielding is not the worst thing in the world, like it's better than being bucked off or um, a rearing or something crazy like that, but it's still pretty hard to get her to go forward. So it's just to figure out what's the right setting to get her to do um, what I'm asking her to do here. So I have her finally standing still for literally two seconds straight and she still wants to move and go around. I do have a few people um, asking me questions and talking to me from the door uh, of the arena here that's located on the left, uh, the right side of the screen. Um, and so yeah, I have a few people um, talking to me and distracting us basically. Um, and I've got Hazel to kind of move around and I dropped my glove. So here's my bar manager just giving me my glove bag um, so I can actually put them on and start writing. So here we got my coach um, complimenting us on our new quarter sheet here and on the tail bag. Um, since it's the first time we're actually using this quarter sheet on her. Um, it's getting pretty cold at this point. It is November, um, almost the end of November now, um, and it's getting pretty cold, especially um, around 6 or 7 at night, which is when we are actually having our lessons. Alright, so the coach is in the arena and it's time to start the lesson. Um, we start with a good warm-up um, just because it is uh, getting colder you definitely have to warm up your horse a little longer um, so the way we're doing things here is just to get her to just do a couple circles at a walk um, sometimes I will ask her to stop back up do all kinds of little things just to see if she's paying attention and if we're doing all right So one of the strengths here um, is that she is basically having a nice consistent walk and her head carriage is a little lower than it used to be. So we're not asking her to collect yet just because we're warming up. Uh, but just already from starting and getting on, her head is not like six feet up in the air um, and it's definitely a little bit more manageable as a rider. So change of rain here, going on the other side and doing the same thing. So we're just going to warm her up real good on both sides. Um, if you can, try to bend your horse as much as you can just to get these muscles warmed up as well. Um, it's it's very cool, but I think it's, uh, it's going to be alright with a quarter sheet right on her um, 
beer end and that's gonna help just uh, warm up those muscles as well. So it is official, the lesson has already started. Um, as soon as we pick up the trot, that just means we are starting our lessons here. Um, the first one just is never the best one. Um, you still have to warm the horse up in the trot um, as well and just um, get a good feel of that um, before you start asking them to collect and such. Um, so yeah, there's always like the head up moment, especially when you ask them for the first transition. Um, which is still something we're working on. Um, the horse is definitely not going to be relaxed from the get-go. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but um, that's something we're working on currently. So one of Hazel's um, definitely most improved here is the is the trot. Um, the rhythm is definitely more consistent and easier for uh, me to basically ride. Um, I'm really really pleased with her um, trot and her transitions to the trot, um, which just makes my life a hell of a lot easier. So here we're going around our spooky corner as we call it. That's the corner where she always, always, always brings her head up a little bit just before we touch the wall. It happens every single time and so my coach is asking me to correct it right away um, by making sure that I have my hands a little bit more engaged and asking her to get a little bit more supple. Once we're satisfied with that, it's time to carry on with something else. As you can see here, we have the horse almost on the bit. Um, and it's definitely way better. So once again here, just pay attention to her head uh, carriage that's going a little lower as well as her um, the symmetry of her um, legs in the trot which makes it definitely smoother for me to ride um, and also more pleasant for sure um, and that's definitely a major 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 improvement So one of the things we've been working on lately is straightness. It's definitely better than it was if you guys want to look back a couple of videos um, where she had she was basically leaning on both of my legs and it was a little bit of a wonky um, kind of thing. So she's definitely straighter. I do have to get a little better myself at calculating um, the right moment to ask her to get into the center line as well as getting out of the center line. So these are the things we're working on right now, is just to get her to um, pay attention to my cues at the right moment so we can kind of get a good timing here. So here we'll be working on her leg yield um, from X. Um, so I'm trying here to push her to the side and as you can see she's got a little bit of a spook. There's literally no noise that was there, nothing really major that would have um, caused her for her to you know um, break but um, the, the thing the only thing you can do when that happens is just to keep on riding riding your horse forward trying to gain control back again to the pace and bringing their brain back in their heads slowing them down and getting them to realize that so um, since it was a fail here we're just gonna try at the walk to get her to move over this is not her strongest side. Um, every horse has a weaker side and a stronger side. This is a side that she's not definitely usually um, comfortable with. So we're just gonna work on that a little bit more. Bringing her back to X and asking her to leg yield all the way to the wall until we get it um, exactly the way we want it. So 
So we are now going to try and see if we can get her to do the same thing but on the, on the opposite side. Um, I do have a little bit of resistance, uh, which is new. Like this is what just happened in that one lesson, where she was just a bit more resistant and it was a bit harder to work her. Um, so we got like a good shoulder in, but her butt was sticking out here. So we're trying to correct it again. Same thing here. So um, it just needs a little bit of work. Eventually she'll get it, but. Um, that's definitely a thing that we're working on, so that's one of our weaknesses. So bringing her back to X, and then this time, as you can see, much better leg yield to the wall. The only issue is I wasn't able to get her from that wall to the other, but that's something we'll be working on um, on her own here uh, once the lesson's over, so probably over the weekend, and get her to do leg yield on both sides. So here we are again trying to get back to X and push her towards the other wall. And as you can see, this is something that she does on her own. She figured out that that's what we've been asking her for a bit and then that's why she wanted to go to the other side. So that's what she's doing again, that's on her own account. And then I had to give her a little bit of a whip motion here to bring her back to my hands and, and paying attention to me, right? So um, we got her to go the other way. It definitely it wasn't like as nice as um, I wanted it to be, but at least she wasn't on autopilot. So horses are definitely like very intelligent creatures and therefore they are able to anticipate things and so this is what I'm going to ask to correct basically is to bend her exactly um, in the way that she wasn't giving me a good bend and then therefore I wasn't able to push her over. So it's time to sh like shake things up a little bit, um, especially when um, it was successful in a way, but it wasn't exactly perfect. So we're just changing and moving around and doing something a little bit different. So we're bringing her back into a nice trot and then we'll work on her straightness once again, um, just so we, we can get that down. It's definitely improved a lot in t about two lessons. Um, she is definitely like a fast learner and she's doing really, really good. Um, but um, there's definitely little weakness point that we're still currently working on. So once again, lead change and working into the center line to get that straightness um, figured out a little bit. She is not as bad as I am to basically give her the cue to pick up exactly at A from A to C. Um, I still have to uh, learn how to anticipate a little bit better and measure a little bit better so we can actually like be bang on at C or at A, whichever way we want to put it. So moving on here, uh, we are going to try to do some canter exercises here. So it's to get her to canter on both sides and by picking up the right um, or proper lead, if you will. So for people that are new to horses or to dressage or to cantering in general, um, in order to have a horse to canter on the right um, or the proper lead, it has to be the inside front leg of the horse that um, basically goes forward first if that makes sense so eventually once we get there i will uh, basically let you know that's the right lead and that's the wrong lead so um the the way the horse's lead works is the the front um, inside leg has to be the first one down and therefore um, you get a little smoother of a canter there
So here um, at the trot here we're just trying to get a good rhythm and I'm trying to get a good feel in my hands. When I feel like it's the um, good time I will start asking her for a canner and then you should see that shortly here. Um, this is the side of Hazel that's the hardest for her to pick up. Um, as you can see here, so we tried for a second, didn't really work. So balance your horse again, try to get them to slow down, collect properly. And then once you're ready again, you can ask again. So if you fail, it's fine, it's totally fine. You just have to bring them back. So here, this is the wrong lead. So um, that's one of the examples of the wrong lead. So if your horse doesn't get it right away, it's totally fine. Um, you definitely just have to bring them back to the trot, collect them properly, get the good feel again. Um, one of the things that can help you is to basically um, bring your inside um, arm or like your inside rein, just put it a little tighter so it's going to help them pick up the right lead um, when you're asking them. So it's a trial and error for sure. Um, it's not a science. So here again, it's the wrong lead. Um, you'll see the dominant leg is the one on the outer side, and that's not where we're asking her. We're not asking her for a counter canner. We're just asking her to get a normal canner here. So we'll keep on trying until we get it perfect. So this side here, which is um, clockwise, is Hazel's um, weakest point. So as she was rushing in a transition here, we just got her to back up uh, a little bit. And um, that kind of resets the horse a little bit and get them to do something different. And then you can try again. Just a little bit of a time here to get reorganize with the rain and make sure we have a proper communication before we try the canner once more so now we're gonna be back here at the walk and then try and then try it again at the canner and you'll see it really um, help a lot good communication with your arms legs as well as um, a proper bend in the horse really helps to get you into the right proper canner lead so here you have it You'll see the dominant leg is the inside one, which is perfect. That's exactly what a canner should look like. Here is that the you'll see the inside leg, the inside front leg is going forward and, and reaching all forward. So that's what it looks like. So what happened there and why did the horse stop? Well, it happened when you're actually training your horse to do um, the canter and especially to balance themselves in the canter. So basically shifting their weight from the front to their back end um, that they will break their canter. And that's totally fine. They also need to build stamina and muscle to kind of keep it collected and perfect. Um, so it will happen. And as you see here, we're just gonna get right back in and try to give her a nice trot um, and then once again ask her for the canner. So what happened is if, if they're weak on one side or the other, it doesn't matter. You just really have to work with them and work on it. Um, and in this lesson, um, she started to be um, anticipating things and that's exactly what's going on here. Um, you'll see her hop around on her leg here because she is anticipating that we will pick up a canner. She is smart enough to figure out what the exercise is already. Um, and there's no big deal, like she's not doing anything wrong. We just gotta keep her calm, collected, and paying attention to me as at the end of the day, I'm the one that decides when we pick up the next lead. So as we all know, um, it does take a lot of work and patience to get to perfection. Um, so we're gonna ask for her to work on that side again and again and again just to get make sure that we solidify the proper lead here and the proper cues from my part here um, so you'll see we'll pick up the canner again and once again that's a successful canner um, we got her pretty good she does break but it's okay so that's what a proper canner looks like 
um, now I have to work on the shape of my circle here. So the thing that Hazel tends to do is to cut her circles. Um, and that is something that's a little hard. I'm showing here demonstrating the, what I felt in my hands and in my legs. So Kenner is basically a nice balance work of your hands and your leg to get the perfect um, collected Kenner. And then the thing that was happening there is that Hazel was rooting down with her mouth and that was bringing me off balance here and it was really hard to control the shape of the circle so what i came to understand is that she is she's good she's gonna pick up the lead and everything but i still have to work on um my legs and try to get the good signals from there so therefore i don't have to open my outside rein that much to get a proper shape here so here you have again um hazel doing like did a little bit of a crazy stuff here while I'm trying to open my jacket. At this point, we're both sweaty and hot. Um, we've put a lot of effort into this lesson there, uh, but it felt good. It was really, really good. So now we have a little bit of a walk break to both catch your breath and cool down a little bit. Um, and then we're going to try to canter on the other side um, here. So that's what we're going to be trying to do in a second once we're all cooled down, refreshed and ready to go. up a nice draw here um, I just want you guys to pay attention here to her shape um, she is definitely she came along a long way uh, for this actual carriage here of her head it's stable it's there and then I can feel it in my hands here too uh, which also helps me feel more confident and then uh, when you feel more confident then you're able to pick up your cues and and um, work a little harder with your horse there so I'm I'm really really pleased with how nicely she's coming along and um, look at that neck like that nice bend here and her nose is not peeking up to the ceiling so that's amazing so here we go again trying to pick up the canner here you'll see it's a nice transition but it goes a little bit out of control here so what happened is um, I ha asked her to pick up the canner it was a proper lead but the problem that I had is that she was totally ignoring my inside leg. So for those of you that don't know or those of you that know, so basically the way you direct your horse is with your head, legs and your um, hands. And a way to push your horse over to the other side is basically by using the leg on the opposite side of the, the way you want the horse to go. So what I did is I gave her two good um, spur contact here to try to get her to push herself over to get the circle bigger but wasn't able to. So I had to open my inside rein and as you can see here that's what I'm doing and it's working much better. I can get a little bit of a better circle, um, better shape and um, that's how I fixed it. So since we had a break again, which is like I said, something that will happen eventually um, when they get comfortable in the canner, it's just part of the learning process, um, we're just going to try it again. So we're just going to try to pick up the canner once again on a proper lead on that direction um, and see what happens. So I just wanted to know, for you guys to notice how smooth the transition was and how easier it is for Hazel to basically give me that canner here. So although she breaks and um, she breaks her canner here and there, it's not part of the exercise, it's not the point of it, it's just to get her to pick up the right canner lead and carry herself forward. So that's 
definitely like one of the major points like good point that we are working on right now is to get this scanner uh, put together and she is offering a good amount of effort and it's paying off. So proper canner laid here and we are going good and heavy so we are actually doing a couple good circles before the actual break um, which is definitely something that's going to take time and practice to kind of make sure that we can have a good and elongated um, time in the canner but it does take a little bit of a time to get the muscle properly there. the lesson is almost over at this point here so we are just giving her um, something easy to do a nice good trot get her to bend properly and then we're gonna go with the nice walk break here uh, which signals the end of the lesson um, so I hope you guys uh, have been able to witness a lot of our uh, strength and weaknesses I will do a quick quick recap here so one of the few strengths that we have so far is Hazel's rhythm here in the trot much smoother, definitely better, um, which makes it easier for me to ride her. Um, another point that's very, very strong with her is that she is uh, picking herself up like really nicely. So she is definitely a willing horse, she is a smart horse, but the fact that she is helping me so much um, is definitely one of her strongest suits. Um, one of our weaknesses, well a few of our weaknesses here, so we have to work on our straightness for sure. Um, as you've seen, we've been a little bit challenged with the straightness, but it's something that's new that we've just introduced to her and then therefore it's going to keep on getting better and better and better. Um, so we'll keep on working on that here. Um, another weakness of ours is definitely the canner on the, the clockwise side, which is her hardest side. Um, we definitely have to get that perfected a little bit more as well as on the other side as well for the whole overall canner that we just need to get her to balance it a little bit more, collect a little bit more, but that will come with time. Um, one of our other weakness point is um, that the leg yield definitely needs a lot of work on both sides and that's something I will probably be working on shortly. Um, to get that tidy together and finally one of our weakness as well is the mounting block or the after mounting block um, time where I'm just asking her to stand and do nothing and she just doesn't have the patience and get very fidgety with her legs um, which is something that will happen like no horse is perfect so as you guys can uh, see here there's definitely more weaknesses than strength and that's totally fine because we are at the beginning of this journey here and learning dressage we have lots and lots and lots of things to learn but it's always good to um, be happy and work on on things that are you're great at but it's even better to work on things that you're weak at so you can get better at it and then the more the more you do it the better it is and then you can just change the whole balance of things and get more things that you're good at than things that you're not and that's when you know you're closer to perfection which is the whole point of the sport of dressage here So it's now the end of the lesson, we're just doing a thorough cool down. Uh, we were both hot and sweaty that time, um, we definitely worked really hard. The canner does take also a lot of um, heat, muscles and patience, so um, it makes this a little bit more warm and things. So you really want to make sure you cool down your horse thoroughly, um, especially at this time of year, um, and you cover them well once you're done. Um, so the more that we go along here, the colder it's gonna get, so we just want you guys to make sure you cool down your horse properly.
So huge thank you, um, thanks to YouTube for watching this video and following our journey along here. Uh, we're really, really grateful to have you guys on board in our journey. We're definitely doing the little bit of a step, the very tip-top beginning of doing uh, dressage and um, I just wanted to share the whole experience with you. We'll see how far we're gonna go. Uh, but as you guys can see over and over and every week we we get something better and perfected and and that takes time patience and a lot of work and um, I'm really really glad to be able to film this for you guys and explain it to you um, and for you guys to watch it so thank you for watching this um, video I hope that you guys enjoyed it I hope that you guys learned something new or if not at least um, had a great time with us learning um, these new skills here um, and I will see you guys very very soon. Bye!